This video is about the series parallel resonance of a bifilar coil. In a previous video I already showed this, but this was based on a positive inductive spike. And now I'm doing it with a negative inductive spike and it seems to work better. You can see the voltage jump up and uh, this is a huge increase of resonant energy. Keep in mind that the energy stored in a resonant coil uh, expressed as a voltage of the dielectric field is uh, uh, related to the square of the voltage. So it's not linear. I will share this schematic uh, in more detail later in, in the video. This is my basic setup. I've got two bifilar pancake coils equal size. Uh, this one is vertical because I don't want them to be magnetically coupled. Uh, this is the pulsed coil and this is the resonant coil. I've got two separate power supplies. One is for the chips to be driven and one is for pulsing the coil so it can see how much the coil is consuming. And um, both coils are high side switched by NFET MOSFETs and to do so I needed gate drive transformers. So I've got one chip driving this chip by a gate drive transformer that is driven by a XC604 chip and that is driven by my square wave signal generator. The signal generator then also drives this HEF4528 uh, monostable vibrator dual channel. And the first channel is driven by the square wave. Uh, this creates a phase shift and this signal is then fed to the second channel. And the second channel is again making a pulse. Then the very small pulse is again fed into a 604 XE gate drive chip that is fed into the uh, gate drive transformer into the second MOSFET that is switching this coil. And it's switching the high side grounded. So the capacitor you see here is grounded on the positive supply and the coil is grounded on a negative supply. The coil is also tuned by a parallel capacitor and this capacitor is 10 nanofed equal size to the other series connected capacitor, also 10 nanofarads. Now, the first coil is producing a inductive spike that is captured via a very fast diode into the first series connected capacitor. I say series connected, but the connection is all only made when the uh, MOSFET is being operated. So it's really shortly in place with the resonant uh, coil. Let's see how it works. Here we've got the resonant sine wave. I'm feeding the first pulsed coil with 10 volts DC and 0 0.6 amperes. And the resonant frequency is right now set at 90.29 kilohertz. I've got really small increments, but this will make it more clear what, what is happening. The, the coil already is resonant, but you can see here the discharge of the pulse of the capacitor. And it's not at the bottom, the valley of the sign. When I do so, the series parallel resonance creates a voltage increase. Let's turn it up. I'm going up, up, up. You see the voltage is already rising and now it suddenly jumps. Suddenly the voltage jumps. I'm going back. I'm at 90.12 kilohertz. I'm going back again. Bam. You see the increase. It's a sudden jump where the series parallel resonance is becoming active. Here you see it again. I'm going further down. I'm now at 90.69. Uh, I'm going up in frequency with 10 hertz increments. Now I'm going down and I'll show you the, the jumps. I'm going down. I'm now at 
90.04 kilohertz. Bam, there it is. Very large uh, amplification of the voltage and uh, since the energy is related to the square of the voltage, it is a, a huge energy increase with the series parallel um, resonance. I'm going up again to show you again. So, going down again and bam. This is a very sudden increase of energy going down. And there it is again. It's really violent in rise. It's it's a sudden uh, activity in the coil. And I really like this. I've been working hard to achieve this. And uh, here it is. I will switch to 100 hertz increments. So this is the normal resonant sign and you can see where the discharge of the capacitor is. It's not at the right phase angle, it should be at the valley and then the series parallel resonance creates a voltage increase in the system. I will go further down and you see the voltage is going down again. Let's show it again from the other side, and there it is. Very special. The power supply, when I'm switching, it's now at 0 0.3 um, amperes at 9.9 .9 volts, and when the series parallel resonance is, is occurring, uh, the voltage uh, is still 9.9 .9 volt, but the amperes have slightly increased to 0 0.04 amperes. I will connect a proper tool. Let's look at the amperage. This is in milliamps, so I'm now consuming 30.5 milliamps at 10 volts DC. And the coil is resonant, but not series parallel resonance, meaning that the voltage isn't really high. I'm gonna tune it now into the series parallel resonance and it jumps up and let's see what the maximum is this is the maximum at 5 uh, 51.4 milliamperes still at 10 volts DC and the voltage of the resonance sign I'm, uh, I'm counting divisions from my oscilloscope, so it's not exact, but it's a good indication. It's uh, 275 volts peak to peak. And when it's not resonant, let's turn the other way. It was a little lot clearer. So now I'm 29.5 milliampere, 10 volts. And the coil is still resonant, but not series parallel resonant. And the voltage is now, let's see if I can make it. It's 200, no, 100 and let's say uh, 10 volts. So the increase in voltage is very important because the energy stored in the resonant coil is related to the square of the voltage. So the difference is not linear, but so it's much more much more energy. I will now show you the schematic. If you want to make a donation, there's a link below to my PayPal account and it would be much appreciated. This research is and will always be open source because it's for the world. We need it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.